Hello, my name is Harold Ryan, and I'm really excited to, to, uh, to be speaking to you at uh, GamerGen.com, and I hope you guys really enjoy Destiny and, uh, and love the story. I mean, my being the president of Bungie just means for me, uh, everything that needs to get done that someone else isn't doing, you have to either figure out who can do it or do it. Uh, in general, I'm the people manager of the company and I, I lead our business decisions and, and then the project decisions of uh, ultimately when we ship and, and, and such uh, fall, fall to me. Uh, I mean, the, the Bungie team, we've been together. I've been with the team since Halo 1 on through as we've, as we've grown. As, and we always are driven by passion of the, and the passion of the team. So it's actually not hard to motivate the team to, to put the effort in to balance and polish and, and really put their hearts into the game. Absolutely, the game is a success. I mean, it's been... It's been accessible for players from day one. We've got something like, you know, over 3 million people are coming back and playing every day. They're averaging three plus hours a day of play per person. It, I mean, the player engagement, the number of players that have engaged in the raid and finished it, the number of players that are in the high 20s for their character level, it's just people are loving the game. Once you get in the game and play the game, it's, it's something you keep coming back to. Uh, there's definitely, I mean, the beta, the beta was a pretty good representation of the final game. And part of that is, you know, launching a, launching a game that's an online game that's on multiple platforms put us in a position where we had to make sure we were testing in the beta a lot of what we intended to be the final game. But the, the other thing that comes with that, I think, so you have some players who, who would say when they played the beta and then they played the final game, there wasn't enough new. In it. it wasn't different enough from the beta for them. And, you know, I think for, for those players, what they should look to is, you know, since we've launched over the last seven, seven weeks, we've, we've created and, and put out in the world many uh, featured events. We're going to keep doing things like that. The world's going to keep evolving and growing. We have our first DLC coming out on December 9th, The Dark Below. That's going to add a bunch of new content to the game, new gear, new weapons, it's a bunch of experiences for people, along with, you know, we keep, you can see we post weekly our patch updates and iterations on the world. So I think this is a world that's going to keep evolving. It's a world that's going to keep being there for players. And so for, for players who didn't, didn't find enough uh, in, the in the beginning of the game when we launched it, there's going to be more. There's more coming. It's, you can always, it's always great to come back and see what's there. I, mean, I think we are, um, when you look at the way we're telling story in the dark below, uh, you know, we're doing it in a different way. Like we're reacting to feedback. We're, we're, we're going to try this out. And I think we're going to probably going to change how we, how we tell story again as we move forward after this. But um, we're really making fiction more accessible and more understandable, or that's our goal for what we're doing with the dark below. And we're going to do that by putting a new character, Eris, in the tower. So um, you don't have to buy the the dark below in order to go go see this new character and start to hear her story and where she wants to push you and so um i think that's going to let us take players who have had the game who've played the game um to be able to load it up and look at it see what new players look like and and decide if that's interesting for them and we're going to keep keep doing that keep changing the way we present story and fiction because i think there are there are a a lot of players who would like more accessibility, more understandability in the fiction as they play the game. Um, well, so at this point, we're not announcing future future retail releases beyond the two DLCs we've already already announced. Um, but the world of Destiny is something the team's committed to continue to evolve and grow for a long, long time. Uh, and you know what the what access to uh, future activities looks like in in the years to come. I, I I don't know at this point. Um, no, I'm I'm not a, not afraid afraid of the new Call of Duty. I think it's it's going to be a fun game. People are going to like to play it. But the um, you know I think there's there's more than enough room in the world for uh, for Call of Duty and Destiny to both exist on the on the platforms.
Um, I think there's a decent mix of players who will play both games, but the uh, but it, but I don't I don't think they hurt each other at all. Yeah, I mean I think the the reason everyone in the world should play Destiny is. It's a great experience. It's a fun game. Moment to moment is fun. Over time, it's fun. It's worth investing in. We're going to keep pushing new content, iteration, and, and better and stronger entertainment into Destiny for players. It's really going to be worthwhile to pick up and play. If you don't do it, you're missing out.